All right, hey everybody, Jason Sam Kovac here, Sam Co Workshop. We are back with another news Thursday, truck news Thursday, car news thir Thursday, what's going on in the industry kind of thing. And here we are going to be talking about, uh, we got a bunch of stuff lined up. I'm actually doing two segments in a row here. So we're going to cover half of these in this one. So we're going to move pretty quick through a lot of it. But Stellantis CEO uh, firm stand, no more buying credit uh, credits uh, for EVs. Goodbye, Hemi V8. So if you don't know, uh, simple version, this whole EV thing is all about money. Everything about it is about money. And auto manufacturers are buying credits from Tesla to avoid uh, the fines and avoid stuff by not having certain amount of EVs on the road by a certain amount of time. And this whole EV thing is the biggest joke. And I don't mind there being EVs and people trying to build EVs, but this government infringement is the biggest joke there is. And Stellantis says, uh, we will no longer buy a single credit. We're just done with it. Uh, so we lose again the Hemi motor will be gone it's not going to be around anymore uh because of the fact that uh like I said they're sick of buying you know they Tesla's made nine billion dollars from selling credits to other automakers including FCA in a, over the last few years okay and then like I said uh, the government the everything this whole thing is the dumbest joke uh, that there is on any kind of level it's just straight up stupid but anyway Stellantis says enough is enough they're not playing that game no more so they're done with that Next up, we have on here, we have right here, uh, new CEO of Jeep shares his plans to make Jeep great again. So he's come in, we got a new one here, and uh, he's got some big plans. It's pretty interesting, you can read about what he's done in here. Uh, Filosa, uh, major impact during his tenure in Brazil over the last five years, led a team, brought Jeep plant, blah, blah, blah. Point being is here that he is going to do everything he can. Uh, the brand is in transition. We need to gain market penetration and market share because it's not aware, or it's not where the brand deserves to be. Okay, now Jeep is still already fantastic. Everybody's like, oh, gee, you know, they're no longer making the Gladiator. All this junk crap you hear. Keep in mind right here, listen to this, I'm talking about the Wranglers. Wrangler, we have the best selling SUV in the United States. As Jeep, we own the market and did for more than or did more than fifty percent of the market share plug-in hybrids in the industry. It's very strong foundation. It was started building this transition. The Jeep Wrangler 4XE has been the best-selling plug-in hybrid um, vehicle in the United States since the second quarter of 2021, and still remains the best-selling uh, plug-in hybrid in. Uh, 2023. Okay. I mean, people, like I said, it's, it's, it blows my mind how people don't know what power Jeep has and what it really is and how great it is. But anyway, uh, they got a new guy in here. He's going to be doing a lot more. He said inflation was such a big and negative hit for families. We need to do something. So in the latest release, we roll back our prices. We've added 90 uh, or added value to 90% of our volume vehicles. They're doing a lot to it. They're trying to help. Nobody else is doing this. Okay, I mean, it's not big, tremendous drops like the Compass is 2500 less than it was originally, and you're getting more options. Uh, the Jeep Grand, Cher Cher Grand Cherokee is down $2,300. It's not a ton yet, but keep in mind, uh, Jeep is also one that gives tremendous discounts uh, and sells a lot of vehicles that way. So Jeep is the only one really caring about us as the little guy as far as when it comes to pricing. And General Motors with the Colorado version. I will say that too, because that Colorado is so dirt cheap in price and you get so much for it. I love what Chevy's done with that, but Jeep is stepping up the game. So that's pretty impressive. Moving on from that one here. <clears throat> this is, uh, you know, I rip on Farley at Ford quite a bit because of the fact that he bugs me and, you know, Ford quality sucks right now and it's going been going downhill for a long time. Um, and, and, you know, he should be fixing that, but this was a pretty cool story here. Okay. So this dad, uh, his son is battling cancer and the dad buys him a Mustang. And, uh, then this story goes viral on there. Okay. But he's 18 years old, Springville, Utah. Uh, and he ended up, uh, got a 2020 Ford Mustang that he got used. Uh, anyway, he, this is it right here. Um, beautiful car, but his dad bought it for him because this guy's got cancer, you know, who knows how long and what's going to happen. And he bought his son a, a Mustang. Well, Farley saw this and, uh, here's where that kicked in. Okay. Here he is right here. There's the one with the cancer here that got that. But, uh, let's look at this right here. Uh, right here, Ford CEO responds personally on social media. Okay. This is pretty interesting. Here's, uh, the original post that went on where he bought his son that Mustang. And then here's Farley right here. 
Hi, Joe. I'm sorry to hear what your family is going through. Please let me know if you or your son would like to attend the FPR race school to experience a Ford Mustang dark horse on the track. DM me and we'll make it happen. And he did. And that's amazing, okay? So you can go on to read about this if you want to, but he's taking care of it. Here's that whole family, um, and they're going to fly them out there. He's going to be in It's a beautiful, beautiful story, and I love this. And you got to give credit where credit's due. And this is absolutely a fantastic thing that's going on here. So I was really excited to read that story. Moving on from there, next one up we have Toyota's bringing out the Land Cruiser FJ Compact Off-Roader. Uh, Using uh, the Hilux ladder frame, which will basically be the same thing as what all the TNG, BB, LMLP, whatever the one that every Toyota truck is built on now. All they do is add, uh, weld on some tabs on there for wider bodies and cut them off for narrower bodies. It's all the same thing anymore. But um, anyway, they are planning on bringing this out. They are kicking it around, but it is going to be the Land Cruiser uh you know, the FJ Compact or whatever they're calling it is supposed to be coming out in spring of 2025 and then we'll roll out into America probably the year after too. So that's there. We're not getting too detailed into that. Um, this one right here, car values are plummeting and people are underwater in their car loans. This is something that's worth talking about here because right after the pandemic, when prices shot through the roof and there was no inventory, People were paying ridiculous amounts of money for cars. Well, those that was a few years ago, and now they're ready to get rid of those cars, and they cannot because they are upside down in their loan. Okay, there is a reason that repossessions and delinquencies on car loans and defaults and all this stuff is at an astronomical level. People don't want to deal with it. And these companies think that they could get away with this kind of stuff like they've been doing the last uh, couple of years or last year and a half here with these interest rates. When it comes time for these people to get a new car very soon... Um, you know, in another year or two, and they, they don't have, when they're upside down in their loans, they're going to just walk away from it. And it's, it's sad that it's come to this and these companies can't figure this stuff out and, uh, can't just get this stuff in order. It's, it's, a, it's a shame, but people are paying a price for it. And there's also a reason you don't go buy in vehicles that you, you cannot make a vehicle be, an emotional buy. Do not think of a vehicle as an emotional item to get. Think of it as a investment or a tool and you buy smart based on the features you need and the price that you can get it for for the best and forget all the bells and whistles and the crap that comes with King Ranch and limited editions and BS like that. There's no value in it and it's going to come back to bite you later on, especially with the interest rates today and all the stuff going on. And here's a perfect example of how this came back. And uh, it's been biting people in the butt. Moving on from there, because we're already seven, eight minutes into this. We're going to keep going. Uh, this one here, apparently we've got an ad up. What is this one here? Um, I love this. Ford management bonus is now directly tied to quality. Okay. So after facing numerous well-publicized issues in recent years, some of which stem from inefficiencies that went away and resurfaced, Ford has uh, since begun a long process of rectifying the problem. Okay, the automaker recently set a varying best in class or best in class quality targets on most of its models and GM or uh, Jim Farley also noted while well, he expects the process to take years Initial quality has already improved as of late. Um, I think I talked a little bit about this in a different article last uh, news that we did. But anyway, it's a joke. I'm not buying any of it. They, you, it's just start fixing stuff and quit telling us you're going to start making a difference. You know, there's no reason for Ford to be in this position. I love Ford. Ford makes amazing vehicles. But dang it, get this stuff under control and start making them right again. Um, here's another cool thing, though. Ford has got... Uh, GM has got another patent out. Ford's doing the same kind of thing with these, but some interesting truck bed things that we might see in the future here. Uh, we have this one right here. Did GM take a page out of Ford's truck bed extension book? But you can see a built-in, an air compressor hidden back here, and a built-in extension system. So when the tailgate drops, these pop out, and you actually have a full-on extension system here, which could also result into extendable tonneau covers for certain situations. But uh, there's some stuff in the works here that GM's working on and Ford is working on for being able to extend a bed out completely, which is nice. If you put dirt bikes in the bed of your truck or you're putting lumber back there or something and you need to tailgate down, 
um, you know, you got to worry about stuff being lost and slipping out. Well, this gives you all, oh, it extends that bed all the way out to the end of the tailgate. And I uh, have some hidden compartments in there, which is pretty impressive. So we shall see if this comes out, but they are kicking the ideas around on some of these pieces. Does look like you're going to give up a little bit of bed space for it. Um, on the side here, may or may not matter. It's still tucked in behind the wheel well, but there are some things that they are kicking around that have some potential, and uh, we may find out about that pretty soon. Here's another something kind of look at here. It's pretty interesting. A full where the tailgate actually drops down lower, and the step is on the inside. You can walk up it like a ramp. That's pretty cool, especially for us hunters, um, where we're going to use like a jet sled and pull a deer up on there, being able to angle it down push that against there and push a jet sled right up. There's some potential coming in some of these things that we got going on here pretty soon. Um, and so we are going to go ahead and end this one right here because of the fact that we are already 11 minutes in. And like I said, I'm making two versions of this. They may publish same day, maybe a week apart. I don't know, but thank you for watching and we will be back with more stuff for you real soon.